Senhoras e senhores de todo o meu Brasil, seja muito bem-vindo neste que é o último vídeo desta incrível série de três episódios do Físico Nassim Haramein, onde ele nos fala coisas incríveis e de forma muito bem sintetizada. Seja bem-vindo a este maravilhoso vídeo legendado e hoje, no último episódio, ele vai nos falar sobre as dificuldades que ele enfrenta ao trazer esta inovação para o mundo. E também se está longe ou não de o nosso mundo dar um grande salto quântico em questão de como vivemos sobre o planeta, em questão de como a nossa vida pode se tornar melhor e em quanto tempo vai levar para isso, será? São essas as perguntas feitas para ele no episódio de hoje e nós vamos conferir, inclusive, com direito a essas imagens aí, ó. <risos> É isso aí, tá muito incrível, não perca esse vídeo, o último episódio, eu vou deixar aqui do lado o link para os outros dois vídeos, caso você ainda não tenha visto, a parte 1 e 2, essa é a parte 3, é o final, está muito legal, e eu espero que você goste bastante, deixe seus comentários, e vamos ao vídeo. So from, from that would stem out, and I, I know your work, would stem out a lot of solutions, a lot of new concepts, and a lot of practical applications. Right. That might butt heads with the current establishment in today's world. Oh yeah, whether or not be does. politics with oil, with big industry, big pharma. Mm -hmm. So, have you ever seen any resistance? Have you ever felt any resistance to these new concepts that you're bringing forward with the Resonance Project? Oh my God, for sure. You know, we're talking over the last um, 30 years of research that I've done. I've seen and I've experienced censorship at many different levels, especially in science and physics and so on. Um, you know, it's extremely difficult to get heard. It's extremely difficult. Um, you know, you get ridiculed in many different ways. Uh, it's actually pretty painful and it takes, it's, it's a hero's journey mm -hmm. to go against some of the largest establishment, both on the spiritual side and religious side, Uh, and on the scientific academic side. Yeah. And so I've experienced many, many events of censoring and, well, and difficulties. Yeah, for the audience, Nassim writes uh, actual physics papers and tries to present them to, the I scientific guess, scientific community. the scientific community, which are, I guess, institutionalized organizations like the big schools, the big universities of the yeah. world yeah, that have had centuries of basic compartmentalization and censorship established within them to promote um, their views to promote their views and the views of the people in power right right they're That's putting right. them forward so it's I find it all the time in the work that I do it's it's one thing to do an event or to do a talk with someone that doesn't have the name doctor in front of their name mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. as soon as you stick the name doctor in front of their name everybody wants to listen to them mm -hmm. so it's almost like um, it's almost like just because an institution writes you a certificate saying you passed our course, right. then you are gifted enough to go out and spread this mm -hmm. knowledge. And But then, meanwhile, the knowledge that they're trying to spread is being censored all along the way. So right. And, and, but, and then on top of I mean, incredibly, is that if you look in history and you look at previous moments in history where there was great advancements in science, It typically didn't come <laughs> from the institutions of the time. It typically came from indep independent researchers, people that thought that thought completely outside the box, differently, and that upset the apple cards. And they were censored. They were persecuted. They were, you know. Yeah. And eventually, people went, "Oh, but maybe he's right." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. Uh, often it was too late. They had either killed the person, yeah. or you know, yeah, the they person stuck him in jail forever. <laughs> yeah, or exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And so mm -hmm. it uh, it's kind of sad that uh, this in some ways continues into a modern age. Sciences should not be about dogma and believing, believing that something is specifically that way. It should be open to any ideas. And then the ideas that are correct will you know, eventually come out of the bunch and the rest will weed out. Yep. Um, and this is w the way science is truly meant to be. So that this, then therefore the actual 
a wording of the scientific method is something that you hold true to yourself. If, if it's applied properly, it actually works. That's right. And yeah. it shouldn't be about what degrees ha someone has or not. You know, um, uh, Einstein wrote relativity long before he got a PhD and so on. Um, you know, it, it just is um, uh, critical that, in, that uh, you know, in fact, in order for somebody to come up with something new and outside the box and, and, and more evolved than what it is, that person has to be able to step out of what's being taught yeah. in the universities every day and all, you know, the um, indoctrination that goes on in, in some ways, not necessarily voluntarily, but it's just that if you, if you learn these things, you're going to tend to think that way and if you uh, continue to think the same way everybody else is thinking you're going to arrive at the same point and you're not going to be able to move very far the field of investigation sure. you're in you might be able to move it a little bit but you might be moving it in the wrong direction because you went with everybody yeah. else as well yeah. so you know in order for you know a big quantum jump in our understanding to happen ha for it to happen it has to be somebody that is thinking outside the box yeah no i and i agree 100 percent. and i just this begs the question then everybody knows that there seems to be a pressing need for immediate change in the world today and what the work that you're doing with the resonance project foundation it's not only physics it's also environmental it's also health based uh, uh theories and, and practices and solutions right what would happen if and i urge everybody to check out his website and the pro uh, foundation's website what would happen if an institution goes you know what nasim you are right come with us you, you now you got full funding and you got the run of the show. What what would you do in that situation? What would what would happen if they tried to bring you into the fold? Is that would you see that as a a, a, a means to control the output of your of your foundation, or is that is that something that you would welcome? Oh, um, you know we are approached and we do collaborate with people that are very much in the mainstream and mainstream institutions, financial and scientific and so on. Uh, people are not necessarily aware of it, um, but we do. And uh, because w we don't want to do what, you know, we don't, we don't want to segregate like we have been segregated. Right, right. We have to bring everybody together. Yeah. We have to all evolve. So it's not... Um, it's not us against them. It's not an us against them yeah. thing. We, um, and absolutely, more and more of the scientific community and the institutional uh, community are interested. Yeah. And, you know, in fact, the foundation right now is uh, undergoing some changes that involve the private sector and all mm -hmm. this stuff. Um, of course, it's challenging for some parts of the private sector to be faced with changes that may involve, you know, f amount, uh, you know, infinite amount of energy available in every point in space, <laughs> you know, <laughs> gravitational drives where we can leave the planet, uh, you know, all these things, they change uh, our way of doing business they change our yeah. society very fundamentally and people so are going to be threatened there is what's going to happen there right? is yeah. the, already you know the but um but at the same time we have to move forward yeah we are challenged right now in our ecology in the way we live on this planet and our capacity to survive and these are the solution that can totally transform our society and save our world yeah. so that transition has to happen and people know that yeah. even in the industry in the agencies in the political realms you know these people are people they have children they have family yeah. they want the earth to continue they want our society to evolve so it's actually happening yeah. it just takes a little time yeah so that this evolution uh, of our consciousness and and this feedback system you're talking about where we're going to get what we need it's not what we want mm -hmm. if we all 
open ourselves up and become our individuals, not be controlled mm -hmm. and allow this information to go forward and allow this collaboration to happen. I've talked to many scientists that work for institutions like NASA who they're literally, you sit them down in a chair and they're the most passionate people about whatever, oh, yeah. whatever uh, uh, subject they're on. Mm -hmm. And then, but they still get thrown under that blanket of, well, you're working for a government organization, so you're mm -hmm. all corrupt. And mm -hmm, that. Mm -hmm. I, I, personally, my opinion is we, we got to let that go. Right. right? We got to let that go. We exactly. got to be able to co cooperate with each other. We mm -hmm. got to be able to give a little bit of amnesty right. for the people that work for these government organizations, right. for them to come out. Yeah. And I'm sure you talk to them too. Oh, they, yeah. they love your concepts. Absolutely. And, yeah. so, uh, some of them are very excited about what I'm doing and they might not publicly talk about it. And, you know, many of them don't because, you know, if they do, then they, you know, they're under um, big... Uh, the rest from their peers and their funding and, and, funding and institution yeah. and so it's not necessarily the best thing for them to do but they incorporate a lot of the stuff I do and others in their thought process and all this and it yeah. it's changing the world slowly from the inside right and it's not for it's not because somebody works for a, a, a governmental agency or f even for the military or whatever that they're not people they're people they have families, they mm -hmm. have children, and they're actually, and most of them are doing things because they, they think what they're doing is the best for the planet and yeah. they want to help. You know, they, it might be misguided in some cases yeah. when they're shooting each other, you know, in some country, but, it, um, you, but, it's, it, but it's changing and it's evolving and we have to open our arms and open our, our hearts and not do what they're doing to us. Yes. In that, because otherwise, you know, we defeat the, pur the purpose yeah. of the whole operation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wonderful. Please check out Nassim's website, the Residence Project Foundation. You can find all the links and all the information cited below in this video. Uh, and if you see Chris this video... Chris Nassim in the raw. In the raw, yes. <laughs> so thank you very much for watching and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Let's jump in the oh, lake. Hear that loon? Ah, uh, yeah, right at the end. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so let's go and connect with the universe. It's all fluid dynamics. Let's do it. Glacier water, here we come. Woo! <laughs> 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 Muito legal, não é mesmo, gente? Eu espero que você tenha gostado. Se você gostou, deixe seu like no vídeo. Deixe seu comentário, o que você acha, o que você pensa sobre isso, o que você pensa sobre o futuro que nos espera em breve. E eu agradeço a você por ser inscrito neste canal. Se você não é inscrito ainda, se inscreva para todos os dias ter vídeos maravilhosos como esse para ver. E a gente se vê na próxima. Um grande abraço e até mais. Vem aí no canal do Pava, Escola da Alma. Um lugar para aprender as coisas do espírito dentro de um novo espaço de tempo. Aumente a sua bagagem da única coisa que levará deste mundo, o conhecimento.